Many of us know the story of Noah's Ark. God told Noah to build a big boat called an Ark, and he told Noah exactly how to do it. The Ark was to be 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 foot high. It was to have three decks be divided into rooms and have a door in the side. Noah was to find one male and one female of every kind of animal and bird and take them into the Ark. He also had to take food for all those animals. Believed to be fiction by many, there are some who believe that it's not only a real story, but there is actual proof of the Ark itself. Every few years, a new team of mountaineers claim to have discovered what could only be the Ark, and climbs down from the mountaintop carrying chunks of rock believed to be wood. Extensive satellite searches of Mount Ararat have been conducted. They particularly focus on something called the Ararat Anomaly, an unidentified arc-sized formation near the mountaintop. Photographed by the US Air Force in 1949 and thought by some to be the Ark. Even for the scientifically inclined, it is conceivable there is a grain of truth to the Great Flood story, since the Old Testament is after all a document written by human beings about the world as they knew or understood it. Perhaps there was a mighty flood one year, which a fortunate man and his family weathered in a massive boat. For the next 20 years, the Ark search was concentrated on Mount Ararat itself. From 1960 until 1984, nothing was heard of the ship formation. Attention again focused in the summer of 1984, when Ron White convinced astronaut James Irwin and Dr. John Morris to take a look at the site. Ron, who can be a very persuasive fellow, succeeded in convincing them it was the Ark. A news conference was held and they announced their discovery. The next day, the news was broadcast throughout the world. Some Christian radio and TV stations played it up pretty big. One radio station was reporting that the explorers had succeeded in getting inside the Ark, and that the wood was being flown back to the States for testing. However, it's not scientifically conceivable that the Ark ended up on top of a 15,000 feet tall mountain. Quite simply, there's not enough water on Earth to raise water levels that high. And in case you were thinking that plate tectonics raised the mountain peaks since Noah's time, Mount Ararat was just as tall and out of reach then as now. The anomaly is very unlikely to be an Ark. Five years ago, Farouk Elbaz, director of the Boston University Center for Remote Sensing, told Life Science that believers are interpreting satellite images with a biased outlook. He said the following, Up to this time, all the images I have seen can be interpreted as natural landforms. The feature that's been interpreted as the Arat Anomaly is to me a ledge of a rock in partial shadow, with very thickness of snow and ice cover. There are many ancient stories of a flood that are remarkably similar to the story of Noah and the Ark as told in Genesis. The names and places are different, but the story is similar. There are different opinions, but many believe all these stories are based on some event that actually did happen sometime in the distant past. But what do you think? Is the Ararat Anomaly Noah's Ark? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more countdown videos.